Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today we're going to show you two things. One, we're having a bad shit. Well, we're not. One of my rattlesnakes is, so we're going to treat that and kind of show you how we go about doing that. The snake isn't going to be very happy about it, but we're going to do our best to get it done anyway. And while that's going on, we're also going to show you how we, so I see people do it all the time, how we pick up a Gaboon Viper. So, let's get rolling. First things first. What we're going to do is go ahead and, well, before I take that lock off, I want to show you what we're going to use to treat. So in here, we're going to give a, a lukewarm soak. Basically, it's like we do with the ball python to get some of that shed off. Most of your Western Diamondbacks don't have shedding issues, but when they do, a good human bath is going to help, like any reptile. This one tends to need more humidity to shed than most, and despite me adding humidity, we still end up where we're at. So what we're going to do is put the snake in here. We just prepped it. The rock is just to add weight. In this case, it'll also give him something to rub against as he swims, hopefully get some of that skin caught and help to pull it off. The skin is loose. It should come off hopefully fairly easy. So we'll put him in there. We'll close him up and give him a chance. So let's go ahead and work towards that end now. Now, obviously, we've got all of our tools ready to go. We've got a couple different snake hooks and a set of tongs. I'm going to need one hook and one pair of tongs for this job. Hopefully, we won't need the tongs. Hopefully, we'll just need the hook. But... He's going to be the one to, actually it's a she, will be the one to dictate that. And you're going to see the stuck shed. She got a lot of shed off, but there on her face area, I don't really want that to fall on you. So we're going to just try to get that out the way. Perfect. That's what we're kind of dealing with. Oh, I know, girly. You know what? I know she can't reach me, but every time they do something like that, it always still makes me jump. You did exactly what I didn't want you to do. Let's go. Now, she is not being calm. She's trying to rattle. I'm just holding the rattle. And her rattle is going to be silent. That is how they sound when they get wet. You can hear it's pretty much completely muted. Now I do want to make sure her top half gets in some of that water because I don't definitely have some skin up there. So now we're going to go ahead and close this up, clamp that down. Now it's not airtight. She's going to be fine. Uh, she's not going to drown. But we're going to give that about 15 minutes. So I'm going to let Kurt make a quick cut to the camera because during that time, well, we're going to handle that Gaboon Viper, but first I got to clean out some of this cage and well, that's boring to watch. All right, YouTube, we just finished a quick clean, got the skin out, got some water added, but it hasn't been long enough and our steak still needs to do some soaking. So what I'm going to do is take this time just to show you kind of the basics, nothing too crazy, of how we're going to move our Gaboon Viper when we need to. I see people all the time want to grab these by their hand. I want to see them want to hook and tail them. I see them want to do all these things. And let me tell you, I also see them get free handled. Not wise, okay? If you have, somebody will say, well, if you were experienced enough, blah, 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 If your Gaboon Viper's got fangs and venom, you probably shouldn't be free handling it. I honestly don't care how experienced you truly are. Uh, it only takes one, especially if you're not. Now, if you've got the head fully controlled by hand, hey, that's one thing. But if you don't, and you're sitting there saying, I am so good with snakes that I know I'm faster than the snake and I can read it perfectly, etc., etc. This is an animal that has the ability to explode in an instant uh, from a lot of different positions and a lot of different directions. And I just kind of feel like when you do that kind of stuff, you're not really paying the animal the respect it deserves uh, for what it's able to do. And one day, it's going to make you pay for that. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but one day it's going to happen. So, we use one, I mean, after all, get hooked, <laughs> send us this really bitchin' snake hook. It'd be a shame not to use this. Uh, they also sent us two, but Kurt took one home for his boa, so I'm stuck using my old one along with my new one. God, this is my favorite. So if you haven't got one of these yet, if you ever think of doing any venomous work or feel, or anything, get you a hook. This is like the most important equipment you can have. Uh, it's going to be what you move the snake with 90% of the time. In the cage, out of the cage, in the field. I've used these to pick up tons. I'll admit this doesn't make it to the field. I'll beat the crap out of this one because I don't care about it. This is a piece of art. But you can buy the normal one or one like this if you want to use that and take it out to the field and make great hooks for everything. So go ahead 
and do that and know they're not a sponsor and no, I didn't get paid to say that. I say it because it's true. Just throwing that out there. So I like to use what's called the two hook method. Now, this snake is big enough that I, or small enough I should say still, that its body isn't so big that I can't safely handle it with one hook. So I could pick it up on one hook in the middle. It's not such a problem yet. It's gonna get big enough that that will be an issue eventually. And what I mean is, they're just a heavy snake and a single hook uh, can cause damage, too much weight in one spot. Plus, you're gonna end up having to hook and tail them a lot then, not the best, they can flip up out of there. Two hooks is in a much better position with the head control much better for one's safety. So let's go ahead and see if we can get the Gaboon Viper to work with us. Now, even though I could do this particular Gaboon Viper with one hook, I don't. The reason I don't is I want it to, for as much as it can, understand what's going on, understand what these two hooks mean, and understand that I'm gonna be working with it. So that way, as I work with it and manipulate it with two hooks, we don't have much of a problem. Now, I'm gonna probably actually open from this direction here now that I'm looking at the situation. I just feel I got a little bit better situation here. We're gonna go in, you can hear her hissing. They are very vocal snakes. Come on, baby girl. And this takes a little more patience and a little more work. Whoop, that's not what I want you to do. And there we go. We got her up on two hooks and stable. I can slide that a little bit more. This is about what I'd want. And now she's controlled. She can't reach me if she strikes. If she tries to do some levitation backflip out of the hook, she's gonna land on the floor and not on me and I can deal with her. So this is the ideal way of moving a Gaboon Viper. This also lets you see how big she's gotten. Let me tell you guys, there's already some weight here. You can also get a good look at her belly. Give it a quick inspection if you want. See how that face is working. And you can see she's pretty calm like this. She doesn't like really being off the ground. They're not tree dwelling snakes. So she's just gonna kind of chill out till this is over. And then we can just take her and really nice and gentle, put her back. And look at those colors as she crawls off the hook. Just that beautiful velvety green in there, the light almost lavenders. Uh, she's just a gorgeous, gorgeous snake. And again, when you work these, patience is a virtue. She's gonna go in there. I don't need to force it. I can just support her. If I get tired with one hook, I can change to the other one. And I'm gonna let her crawl on her own, just keeping that tail supported. When we get close to the situation, if I want, I can kind of put that in there. But I want to be very gentle with her. Again, this is all about respecting what she is, what she's able to do, and there you go. So you can see the two hook method. Pick them up with two hooks. It's much safer. It may take you a little longer. It may be a little bit uh, awkward to do. Maybe you'll get with practice, even myself. This isn't something I've had to do a lot, okay? We got one snake that requires this. I'm not out juggling rattlesnakes with two hooks, but I do the gaboon and I do it all the time that way. We don't one hook it. We did when it was a very young baby when we first got it. We we're having to work from the top and there wasn't room ever since we went to this cage. Two hooks. Uh, I can't stress that enough if you want to get into these. One thing if you want to do, if you want to get into venomous, it seems right now that it's very, very popular in venomous circles to like say, hey, watch me free handle this or watch me do this or watch me do that. And it's all about me, 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 me. Well, if you're going to keep venomous snakes, it's not about me. I don't want to be the star of the show. I want the snake to be the star of the show. I don't need to take crazy stupid risks to show off. Uh, the rattlesnakes, the Gaboon Vipers, they're cool enough without doing that. Speaking of that, why don't we have a quick check of our rattlesnake, Let's see how she's doing. One thing I hate about this can is getting it to come free. There we go. There we are. She is in a strike position, but Tell you what, Kurt, we're, I wish I had a little more light in that can. So, see if we can't get some of that shed to come off. Oh, I know, baby. Because the next thing we would end up doing, if we can't get it off this way, or if she doesn't rub it off after the bath, would be, and you can see she's still got some on there, would be going to a hook or a tube method where I would literally put her in a tube and then I wanted the tube, use a tool to go in there and start helping the shed remove. However, I do know that this, especially the way that is, should help to get that off. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put her back in her environment. Since I can see she still has some shed, 
even though we just cleaned that all up, I am going to add a bit of moisture to that to kind of help with everything else. We're just going to do a good, solid, strong mist in here. This is much easier to do with her out of the cage. We do do it frankly with her in the cage. But you can see, easier to do this way. That's going to also help to have her get some stuff off of there. And one thing I may have to do with her in the future is we're about to redo some of these cages. We have some new ones coming. Because she's had a little bit of trouble, I may put some things in there just not because she necessarily needs much uh, to feel secure, but just something for her to rub against. Put that back in there. All right, here goes nothing. Now, this is going to be a very agitated snake. So i got to keep that in mind when I'm trying to get her out. She's going to be very likely to want to strike. She's going to be very likely to want to fly off the hook. I'd like to get her by the tail here. And again, patience, patience, patience. And if she's going to stay, we won't have to even tail her. We'll just hook her. I said hooker. <laughs> I know. You want to have a go at me. Let's get that nose back. And all I did there was just give her a quick tap just to let her know to leave. Get her tail in there. And again, one more thing of the hook is I don't have to get in front of her. I don't know how the camera shows. This hook is well over three feet long. And you can see I'm nowhere near the cage. I am out of her strike range. I can reach around from here, grab that, slide that closed, and she's put back safely. What that will allow us to do is give her some time in there, come back and check on her you know, tomorrow or the next day, see if that skin hasn't loosened to come off. And if not, we'll go to the next phase, which is going to be, uh, which I've had to do with her one time on a retained eye cap. It's not fun for her. It's not fun for me. So I'm hoping she can pull back that nose cone and get the rest of that skin off. And then what we'll do, grab a light here, we'll kind of take a peek in here and see if there's anything floating around. And you can see, no, not really. Looks like I had a, uh, I <laughs> didn't realize that was in there. The rock is always in there. A few little pieces of skin and what looks like a tag holder that must have been in there somehow. Which is funny because this is not used for a trash can. <laughs> it's only used to hold venomous snakes. Kurt, you got any questions? You were talking about um, how big a green viper can get. Like right. Like pulling on two hooks. How big can they get? Like weight and length? Uh, I mean, five to six foot is a pretty common length for those guys when they're full grown. It's a big adult. Uh, I'd say 15 to 20 pounds is pretty par for the course on a, on a nice big adult. I've heard of some as much as 40 pounds. The best way to say it is if you're familiar with blood pythons, think about a blood python that has the ability to kill you. Uh, and that's kind of what a pretty good example for these guys. You know, blood pythons don't look athletic, but they're very, very athletic. These guys are in the same, I mean, they're in the same boat. They can turn, they can flip backwards, they can do all kinds of crazy stuff, and they'll get this big, huge body, and people go, oh, it's a big old fat snake, it's a slug, it can't move very fast. That couldn't be further from the truth, and man, that thing can unload, and it can also put a serious venom meal in you. And a 25 to 30 pound snake is a very, very large snake. It's not the longest venomous, that would be the king cobra, which isn't a cobra, but it... <laughs> Long story. Anyway, uh, with getting up to 18 feet. So the King Cobra is getting three times longer than these guys. But these guys can easily, and on average do, outweigh King Cobras. That gives you an idea of how girthy they really are. So uh, we hope that she can get, when I say these guys, I actually mean this guy, not this one. We are very hopeful, though, that she can get uh, a, really, or a really good size for us. We're not going to power feed her to get her to there. I'm not trying to get the world's biggest gaboon, but we do give her a pretty good amount of food as long as she's willing to take it uh, without overfeeding. She never refuses meals for us. Anything else, Kurt? Does the female, on average, get bigger than the male? Yes. So in gaboon vipers, you know, rattlesnakes are one of the few snakes I know where the males are bigger. Most other species of snake, female is going to be bigger than the male, and that is in the gaboon viper as well. We want a nice big old female. Anything else? No. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.